the script for this show is incredible. By the end of the first episode, I was like, that's it. I am totally hooked. I am in this for the long run. Oh, awesome. What was your reaction when you first read the script? Yeah, um, I, I kind of felt the same way. I was so excited um, to do something that was just like eight episodes, pure mystery, just like new things unfolding all the time. Um, and I had just um, come off, like my last couple of jobs were roles where my character's, um, like my character's profession, my character's career was front and center. You know, I just played a lawyer and I played several doctors and, um, and I loved the idea of just doing something where the ground was always moving beneath my feet and it had nothing to do with my job. You know, it was like, just like a really personal story. Um, and it just seemed like what an adventure go off to New Zealand and inhabit this crazy mystery life. Did you get all the episodes at once or did you get them one week at a time? I did, no, I got them all at once. I actually got to read them all before I signed on, um, which was so helpful um, because Peter Stebbings, who is an amazing director and he's Canadian, um, is uh, a good friend now. Uh, but Peter and I met for dinner before, uh, before I signed on to do it. And because I'd read all eight scripts and we hadn't started production, they haven't actually started production yet, um, him and I were able to bounce ideas and like really sort of work on the character and try to see where we thought it could get to. And then he was able to bring those ideas to our writer, Sarah Kate Lynch. Um, and so I felt like a collaborator from the beginning. You know, I didn't have a lot of power. I'm still, um, I'm still just, you know, they hired me, I'm an actor and I have a certain, you know, uh, lane, but I didn't have to stay in it entirely, which was so great, yeah. There are so many emotions that your character Maggie goes through and <sighs> you were fantastic in this. I was like blown away by your performance. Which of the scenes did you find the most challenging? Oh, thank you. Um, there's actually a scene, I don't want to like give too much away, but there's, um, there's a scene involving an adoption and there's sort of flashbacks um, to these, uh, to this adoption office and, uh, and my daughter is adopted. And so it was interesting. It was like, you know, I knew that, that that connection was there, but of all the things that happened to Maggie and of everything that she goes through, I there was so much that was harrowing and really took it out of me. Um, so I wasn't kind of prepared for that. It was, it was even though it was, um, even though it was kind of sad, there was still, um, it still wasn't like the worst thing that happens to her in terms of, of like how long I had to go through it or the scenes or how, fraught and so I I just didn't expect it to get me the way that it did but I think that connection um yeah really got in there there are also some scenes where you and your co-star are in the water and you're wearing wetsuits like not together but um yeah you're wetsuits so that made me wonder how cold was that water yeah the water was freezing I actually um you know I went there in August which is the winter in New Zealand so I was actually swimming in open water uh, in the, you know, tail end of the winter heading into the spring and it was freezing, even with, you know, super thick wetsuits. It was just, um, yeah, but they took good care of me. Um, of, uh, Matt and I had to go in the water. They took good care of us. You know, we had a whole team of medics and water, um, specialty people. Uh, but there were points where they had to yank us where they had to call it. And they were like, we just can't have them in the water anymore. And like safety would call it, even though we wanted to keep filming because I'm tr trying to be a trooper and the directors try to get the shot. And you know, at that point, the safety guys are allowed to just be like, uh, -uh we're done. <laughs> it looked so beautiful. What part of New Zealand was that? Uh, it was actually, um, we were based in Auckland and our studio was in Auckland. It's meant to be the South Island, which is, um, for people who don't know where the Marlboro Sounds is, New Zealand is a North Island and a South Island. Um, and, uh, and we were in the North Island in Auckland, which is the major city there. And then we went to all these beautiful areas around Auckland um, and, uh, and went to this beautiful village called Fungaroa. Um, and uh, like, I couldn't believe they had, they had this, they had like 
they have like mud flats there. They have the tide that comes in for like a quarter mile, half a mile sometimes. And it, it lets out, you get this quarter mile of mud flats. So they would plan these shots for exactly the time of day when the tide would let out. And we have even some scenes that we filmed where I'm standing on what then two hours later is actually just covered by, it's just ocean. Um, and so it feels like, you know, standing like on the ocean floor, it just, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. The cast of The Sounds is made up of Canadians, New Zealanders, and an Australian. Uh, yeah, Matt Nabel, uh, who's a fantastic actor uh, and uh, who I love so much, who plays the cop, who plays Jack, uh, is Australian. And then everyone else was from New Zealand, except Peter, the director, uh, and then um, uh, myself, and then Esther Pham, um, who is the character, uh, who's like the financial investigator. And Emily just does such an incredible job with her too. Yeah. Definitely. I was it was an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, could you tell any difference between the Australian accent and the New Zealand accent? Uh, admittedly, not when I got there. Um, if I met someone here, you know, in LA, and I, I wouldn't, I would think that I would know, um, mainly because I was more familiar with the Australian accent because I'd been there and have some Australian friends. Um, but, uh, but after about a week, of really just like living in it and kind of being steeped in it every day. Uh, I, I can tell the difference now. Um, yeah, and I could tell the difference immediately there, which made me so happy because I feel very connected to their um, situation of, you know, we're New Zealand, we're independent, we have our own identity and our own culture and we're not Australian, stop just saying we're Australian. And of course, as a Canadian, I have the same feeling about the US, right? Which is like, stop telling me that we're just like, America North, that's actually not true. We have a completely different culture and ethos and everything. So I was sympathetic to that. The way the show ended, I felt like it was nicely set up for a second season. Is that a possibility? Yeah, I don't know. I'm always glad those decisions are above my pay grade. Um, when I signed on, it was an eight part mini series. Um, and then while we were filming, I guess they were happy with what they were seeing and they thought, oh, there must be, maybe there's potential for more here. Um, so they did have an ending that um, both closes up the questions and the mysteries that we ask in the first season, because you don't want people to be unsatisfied and be like, you have to explain it. And then we don't, we do wrap that up and explain it. Um, but then yes, there is a, there is a scene at the end where they leave it open for more. Um, so, you know, I guess I'll just see how it does and see if my phone rings. I don't know. <laughs> I, so far, all I know is I did my part and, um, and I'm really glad that I did. And, and you did it beautifully. You're Thank a Canadian you. based in LA. Mm -hmm. um, did you come home for the pandemic? I didn't, I didn't. And I actually have dual citizenship now and my husband's American and uh, both my children are uh, American, well, dual citizen. Um, so we're, you know, we're based here. My husband's been working, um, albeit in a very, you know, social distance kind of isolated way, which we're grateful for because it keeps us safe. Um, so I've been at home with the kids and my husband's been working. So we had to stay here in LA, but it would have been nice. Yeah. Do you have anything lined up or are, is production slow to start up again? Yeah, production is slow to start up again here. Um, which I think is a good thing. You know, we have to take our time. Um, no one's life should be at risk for making a show. Um, but I had a pilot that I was um, slated to do, and then it was a casualty of the pandemic, un unfortunately. So didn't get to do the pilot. And then I thought maybe that would come back around, but it didn't, uh, like a lot of things, who knows, sitting on a shelf somewhere, maybe they'll film it, maybe they won't. Um, so yeah, now I'm just waiting for things to reopen and try to decide what feels good you know a lot of the conversations have been about well would i have to go here and i'd have to quarantine and i wouldn't be able to fly back and forth so i wouldn't be able to see my family um and you know just trying to figure out like what's the right thing where i feel like it feels it feels good and it feels safe and but definitely want to work and when the right project comes along i'm sure that i will jump on it i don't like to go too long without working <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me today. And thank you for your amazing performance in this show. It's such an incredible show. Oh, thank you so much. No, it's my pleasure. And thank you for giving me an opportunity to share it with people. I hope they, I hope they like it.